Good morning, students. Today the topic which we are going to discuss is the class of the condition, also known as associative learning theory, by Ivan Stadler. Now, the learning objectives of today's topic are define classical condition. After the completion of this topic, we will be able to define that this is a classical condition. Describe Pavlov experiment in classical condition. This is the Pavlov experiment in classical condition. Differentiate among unconditional stimulus, unconditional response, conditional stimulus, and conditional response. Means you will be able to differentiate among these concepts. Draw a schematic diagram of classical conditioning experiment with its essential elements the diagram of Pavlov on which he has done his experiment. Explain the implications of Pavlov classical conditioning in understanding the personality. Discuss the application of classical conditioning in psychotherapeutic settings. Now, Ivan Pavlov was a famous research psychologist. He is was a Russian psychologist. He lived from 1849 to 1936. He made many discoveries in the psychological field. He had made many discoveries in the field of psychology. Pavlov won the Nobel Prize in psychology in 1904. Classical conditioning was discovered by I. P. Pavlov. This classical conditioning was given by I. P. Pavlov. He was basically interested in the process of gastric secretion in the uh, means uh, his main focus was on to find out the gastric secretion process in dogs. He got the Nobel Prize on his research on digestive process in the year 1904. Now, classical conditioning is a learning paradigm from behavioral point of view. It is a learning theory from the behavioral point of view. Consider any stimulus. We have to consider any stimulus and that stimulus is known as S1. Capable of electing a natural response. R1 means a response. Stimulus was given, and that stimulus will able to elect a natural response from any individual. Imagine any other neutral stimulus, and S2 that does not elect this particular response means a natural response was not elected when a neutral stimulus was presented in front of any individual. Suppose within the experimental situation, these two stimuli, S1 and S2, means a experimental situation condition was presented and in that condition or situation, two stimuli, S1 and S2, are constantly presented together, are simultaneously presented before the organism. After a few exposure of S1 means after a few exposures of X, S, uh, S1 means a uh, natural stimulus was presented before the organism and S2 together and S2 and S1 are presented before that individual or the organism with, uh, together. The natural response of the stu first stimulus R1 would occur in the presence of the second stimulus S2 also. Means when we are simultaneously presenting S1 and S2 before the individual, then the individual will elect a natural response and that response was called as R1. Even if the first stimulus S1 is absent, thus after conditioning, the second stimulus, originally incapable of electing the specific response, becomes capable of doing the same. Now, what he is trying to say is that 
in the experimental condition s1 and s2 are simultaneously presented and what happens this individual elects the response a natural response and that is known as r1 but after some time the s1 has been taken out and only second stimulus or we can say a neutral stimulus is presented before the organism and now what happened the organism elects a natural response that is r1 means in the absence of s1 also the organism or the individual is electing a natural response that is r1 the term classical conditioning is defined as learning by association so we can define learning when we are defining classical conditioning and that learning can be defined by the term or the word association where a neutral stimulus means the s2 stimulus by virtue of its occurrence in close time and space with a natural stimulus natural stimulus the s stimulus that give rise to a neutral response means s1 and s2 are presented again and again simultaneously and after some time what happened that the neutral stimulus able to elect a response a natural response from the organism become capable of electing that natural response even in absence of the neutral stimulus that will happen when we have there is absence of natural stimulus classical conditioning is applicable only for reflexive and spontaneous responses and not for voluntary responses now classical conditioning experiment the basic phenomena of classical conditioning is very simple one pavlov restricted his experimental studies to the promotion of secretion of saliva in dogs means the pavlov has restricted his experimental studies on to the promotion of secretion of saliva in dogs now what is classical conditioning classical conditioning a learned reflex response that you do when evoked by a stimulus means uh, a stimulus has been presented before the organism and that stimulus will automatically elect a response or a learned reflex pavlov performed experiments with dog on to collect saliva means pavlov has performed a number of experiments on dog on to collect saliva he noticed that dogs would salivate when powdered meat was present now he found through his experiment that dogs salivate when a meat was presented in front of the dog pavlov associated the ringing of the bell with the presence of a powdered meat now what happened or what pavlov done in his experiment he associated the ringing of the bell a neutral stimulus with the presence of a powdered meat and the powdered meat is the natural stimulus he rang the bell every time the dog was served food now what he started doing he started ringing the bell every time the dogs were given the food Pavlov started ringing the bell and the dogs would salivate and after some time what happened Pavlov presented the neutral stimulus in absence of natural stimulus and what he sees he sees that the dogs are salivating without the new natural stimulus that is powered meat being presented for the Dogs. Thus, a learned reflex has been happened. Now, classical experiment conducted by Pavlov on dogs. Now, he has 
put a dog in a experimental condition and observation screen was there and he is observing how the dog is behaving a tube was there for collecting the saliva container of meat and a container was there in that meat was there for the dog device to count drops of saliva a device was there and that device is there to count how much the dog salivates revolving drum for recording responses and a drum was attached with the device that is counting the saliva of the dog and that drum is uh, recording the responses of the dog now food in the mouth of the organism produces saliva now what is that as the food is presented before the organism now what happens the organism salivate when they put food in the mouth of the dog the dog salivates and the same condition when the food was presented a food was put in the mouth of the dog the dog salivates this response is on the part is natural this is a natural response as we see the food saliva comes out of our mouth this is a natural process or a natural response food is called as unconditional stimulus so pavlov called food as an unconditional stimulus that is ucs and the salivation by the dog is called unconditional response and the salivation by the dog is called as unconditional response as as the food is presented before any organism the natural process is that he will salivate so because of that pavlov called food as unconditional stimulus and the salivation of the dog as an unconditional response the stimulus food is called ucs because it's convey the meaning that the response ucr is unlearned and implies no preconditions means it's a natural process as the food is presented before any organism or put in the mouth of any organism the organism will salivate that's why he is calling that the response ucr is unlearned and implies no preconditions during his experiments on dogs the pavlov experiments on dog he introduced sound of the bell now what he started doing he started introducing the sound of the bell a neutral stimulus and he called the sound of the bell as a neutral stimulus which evoked no response on the first presentation now what happened when the sound of the bell was presented before the dogs the dogs did not salivate means no response was given by the dog when the first time the sound of the bell was presented before them this stimulus is called conditional stimulus and this stimulus means ringing of the bell is called the conditional stimulus after a number of pairing of cs means unconditional stimulus that is ringing of the bell and unconditional stimulus that is food now what it means that he started pairing ringing of the bell with food the cs is presented alone to the dog now what is cs conditional stimulus that is ringing of the bell without ucs means without food if cs succeeds in electing the response saliva means if hearing the ringing of the bell elects the response from the dog that is saliva then we call it a conditional response then we will call act as a conditional response stimulus and the response salivation 
is called a conditional response. So when ringing of the bell, bell will able to produce response from the dog and that is the dog salivates then we will call act as a conditional response now model of classical conditioning is given below first ucs that is food ucr saliva means it's a natural process when the food is presented the organism will salivate in the second condition, the CS means sound of the bell was produced. UCR. Then saliva and UCS food powder. In this third condition, CS sound of the bell and CR the saliva will come. Means what happened? What is happening here? When a natural stimulus is presented before the organism, the organism will respond in an unlearned manner, in a natural manner, and response will come. In the second condition, what he has done, he has starts pairing conditional response with unconditional response, that is sound of the bell, and pairing of the sound of the bell with presentation of the foods. Now what happened that the dog salivates. It's an unconditional response. After the pairing has been done successfully, he removes food from there and he is presenting only the sound of the bell. And the sound of the bell is able to produce or elects the saliva from the organism or the dog and that is called as a conditional response. Conditioning, classical conditioning may be defined as, means we can define that conditioning as a process in which a neutral stimulus, here the neutral stimulus is drinking of the bell, by pairing with the natural stimulus and that neutral stimulus has been paired with a natural stimulus and that natural stimulus is the food acquires all the characteristics of a natural stimulus and the neutral stimulus acquires all the characteristics of a natural stimulus and the natural stimulus is what food so when bell acquires all the characteristics of a food then we will say that the classical conditioning process has been done in the model given above, the sound of the bell was neutral stimulus. Means sound of the bell was act as a neutral stimulus for the dog to elicit the response of salivation, but by pairing it a number of times with food. But when the sound of the bell was paired a number of times with the food, and that food was a natural stimulus, it acquires the characteristics of food. The bell acquired all the characteristics of a food and succeeded in electing the response of salivation. And that sound of the bell, bell was able to acquire all the characteristics of the natural stimulus, first thing. And the second thing is that that when the bell was ringed, that ringing of the bell was able to elect the response that is salivation from the dog. Succeeded in electing the response of salivation, but by pairing it a number of times with food. But it will happen only when, when the experiment paired or associated the sound of the bell with the food number of times. Now, principles of classical conditioning. Reinforcement, you know that you can elect your conditional response by the pairing of CS and UCS. 
means conditional response can be elected when we able to pair the conditional stimulus with an unconditional stimulus. Since UCS meat powder comes later, the CS bell. The presentation of CS alone elects saliva. When the bell was presented alone, then also that presentation of the bell elects saliva. But you need to give the dog the UCS constantly. Means you have to give unconditional stimulus that is meat to the dogs continuously after the bell. So here meat powder serves as the reinforcer as it strengthens the bond between the conditional stimulus and the unconditional response that is salivation in the case. Reinforcement is a very important concept in conditioning. It's a very important concept when we are talking about the conditioning. Reinforcement refers to the presentation or removal of a stimulus to maintain or increase the probability of a target response. Reinforcement may be primary or secondary and positive or negative. Means when we are talking about the reinforcement, it can be a primary reinforcement, it can be a secondary reinforcement, it can be a positive reinforcement or it can be a negative reinforcement. Primary reinforcers are those that satisfy a basic need. The food in the Pavlov experiment is a primary reinforcer. If the same experiment is conducted on a child, and she is handed over a chocolate as a reward and that reward will work as a primary reinforcer for the child. That will be a second reinforcer and ch chocolates are not essential for survival. Now what he is saying that there are two types of reinforcer, the primary and the secondary. The primary reinforcer are the reinforcers that are needed or essential for the survival of a human being and there are secondary reinforcers that are not essential for survival. So he is saying he when a chocolate is presented or given as a reward to the child then can it be a primary reinforcer? So he is saying no it cannot be a primary reinforcer it can be a secondary reinforcer as chocolates are not essential for survival. Secondary reinforcers are rewarding or punishing because they have been associated with a primary reinforcer earlier in time. A positive reinforcer is one that is pleasure to the organism. It gives pleasure to the organism. A negative reinforcer is one which is unpleasurable to the organism. He does not like uh, that negative reinforcer should be given to him. Why food is a positive reinforcer? To connect salivation with sound. Electric shock might be a negative reinforcer to connect power flexion with sound. Timing of reinforcement is given. When the reinforcement is given to the organism, it's very important or essential. It has been observed that the first few trials of the conditioning experiments are of special importance. The major bulk of acquisition occurs during this period. Means the first few trials are very important when we are doing the conditioning experiment. And the major bulk of acquisition occurs during these first few trials only. A plateau may be seen in the learning curve during the later trials. Also, the CS may proceed or occur almost simultaneously with the UCS. It loses much of its conditioning power if it's presented after the UCS. Now, the next principle is extinction. What will happen if you do not reinforce the association between the UCS and UCS? Now, Pavlov is saying that what will happen when we do not reinforce the association 
that we have paired or made between the CS conditional stimulus and unconditional stimulus. In other words, after conditioning established means conditioning established means association has been done between CS and UCS. You sound the bell but do not reward the dog by giving meat powder. Means sound sound of the bell has been presented before the dog, but we you are not giving them the meat. You will observe that after a few such trials with low reinforcer means you are not giving meat to the dog. What will happen that the salivation still occurs? Means the dog will salivate, but in a decreased amount. But the amount of secretion done by the dog will reduce. The amount of salivation will decrease. Gradually, as the re unreinforcement trials continue, means the meat will not be presented to the dog. The dog would stop salivating in response to the sound of the bell. A time comes when dog stops salivating in response to the sound of the bell. What you have here in a, is a case of extinction. The conditional response has been made extinct or in other words, deconditioning has taken place as a result of failure to reinforce the association. The conditional response has been made extinct, it will remove or in other words, we can say deconditioning will happen, has taken place as a result of failure to reinforce the association that has been established between the CS and UCS. Now, spontaneous recovery. Sometimes after extinction and after a Time interval with no exposure to CS means you have not given any conditional uh, stimulus to the organism or to the dog. The conditional response may suddenly come back if the CS is given again once again. It will automatically suddenly come back if the conditional stimulus is given once again. The dog salivation to the bell has been removed. Stop. Means the dog stop salivating as the bell ringing of the bell has been presented. The bell has also not been sounded for a considerable time. If after this gap the bell is suddenly sounded, the dog may start salivating once again. Since this phenomenon of reappearance seems to appear from no known cause, it is referred to as spontaneous recovery. Now, what we will call as this concept that is it's called as a spontaneous recovery. However, the intensity of this recovered response is usually less than the original response means the amount of salivation will be less than the amount of salivation was given or responded by the dog at the earlier time. After spontaneous recovery, if the CR is reinforced, means conditional response has been reinforced, means the dog salivates and we are reinforcing the dog on the conditional response. Then what will happen? The learning comes back. The learning comes back means the dog will start salivating at the sound of the bell. If reinforcement is still not given, but if meat was not presented or given to the dog, Permanent extinction may take place, means the conditioning that has been established will be lost. Now, stimulus generalization. 
when the dog salivates only in response to the sound of the specific bell or to the specific light now uh, whether the dog will salivates only to a specific sound that has been produced by the experimenter will it respond by salivating to other bells as well or it will respond or salivates to other bells as well when the bell sound of the bell was presented before the dog Pavlov conducted further experiments to examine these questions he initially made a standard ucs cs collection of food and a specific sound of a bell on test trial he substituted the original sound with other sounds varying in similarities means he had uh, substituted the original sound that was first given by the pavlov to the dog with other sounds which are uh, have some variations but are similar in some he found that the dog salivated to other sounds as well now he can he concluded that the dog salivates to other sounds of the bell as well but the amount of salivation was proportional to the similarities of the sound of the bell to the original cs more similar the sounds of the original cs means uh, the similarities between the uh, original sound and the sound which has been produced now greater the amount of salivation the amount of salivation will be more and less similar the sound less is the salivation if there is less similarity between the sound uh, of the bell and the new sound of the bell then the dog will salivate in a lesser amount this phenomena is known as tuneless generalization and this phenomena is uh, known as tuneless generalization by pavlov the dog was not given any food as reinforced during the test trial means meat was not given to the dog that is no new association of the second sound with food was established generalization occurs spontaneously from the original learning trials from the generalization to stimuli of different degree of similarity with the original cs a gradient of conditional response can also be obtained after conditioning the salivation of the dog to the sound of the bell you can give another sound of the test trial which is slightly different in pitch from the original bell the amount of salivation will be slightly less than the conditional response if on another test trial you expose the dog to even another sound which is bit more dissimilar to the original cs means uh, the sound which has been uh, produced earlier or given to the dog during the experiment and now the sound which has been given or produced to the dog is bit more dissimilar than the amount of salivation bit even less thus for successfully less similar stimuli decreasing amount of salivation will be obtained you will get as a result a gradient of the condition response now discrimination this is the opposite of generalization you have learned that generalization occur to stimuli similar to cs mean generalization means uh, the dog will salivate when a similar sound will produce but if stimuli similar to the cs and electing the cr are presented repeatedly without ever being associated with the ucs those stimuli will ease to elect the cr thus enabling discrimination between similar stimuli suppose the original cs is the sound of a bell that we can call b the dog learns to salivate to b means when the b sound will be produced 
before the dog the dog will salivate and also salivates to b1 and b2 through generalization and dogs is salivating to the sound of b1 and b2 and that is called the process of generalization however if b1 is systematically reinforced mean meat is given to the dog and b2 is not reinforced means meat was not given to the dog even when he have given the response then the dog will respond differentiately to b1 and b2 and that is called the discrimination that will be learned by the dog it will salivate to b1 and not to b2 he starts salivating only to the sound which the b1 will produce and he will not salivate to the sound which was uh, produced by b2 counter conditioning after condition ever condition of course not as you can extend as acquired learning you can also counter conditioning it by associating the cs with ucs of different nature for example you can first condition a dog to withdraw its paw at the sound of a bell as the bell is systematically followed by a shock means as the bell is ringing he will receive a shock then you can counter condition it by systematically pairing the same sound to food now the dog may be conditioned to salivate to the sound of the bell in the classroom teacher can use classical conditioning to quiet down the students example first day of class student walk into class and teacher sits at desk teachers go towards board when ready to teach and children quiet down second day of class students are chatting when the teacher goes to the board teacher asks to be quiet third day of class students are automatically quiet when the teacher walks to the board means the conditioning has been done that when the teacher goes to the board to write something they have to be quiet in the class students will be conditioned in a positive manner student will learn the expectations of their teachers that they have to be quiet when the teachers are writing on the board students will learn the expectations of their school what the school is expecting from them educational implications of pavlov theory the first one is development of attitude Conditioning helps the child in eliminating negative attitude and promoting positive attitude. Means, classical conditioning will help the child in eliminating negative attitudes, and it will promote positive attitude among the child. Development of habits. Good habits can be developed in the child through the process of conditioning. Means, he can able to. develop good habits among the child with the help of conditioning helpful in adjustment the conditioning method help the child to adjust in real life challenging situations in a better manner help for slow learner means classical conditioning will help the slow learners to learn any concept the emotionally unstable children can be treated through the process of conditioning means we can uh, easily treat the children which are emotionally unstable in a better manner or can be treated in a better manner with the process of conditioning enforcement of discipline discipline can be enforced through conditioning when the teachers want to enforce uh, discipline uh, in the class that discipline can be enforced in the class through the conditioning method so students uh, today we have learned the concept of classical conditioning given by ip bala for further reading on this topic you can refer these references now let us discuss some mcqs 
as MCQs are the best tools to know the learning outcomes of the learner. In Pavlov experiments, the dog's salivation, triggered by the sound of the tone, was considered to be pitch of quality. The options are A. Unconditional stimulus, B. Unconditional response, C. Conditional response, or it's D. Conditional stimulus. So the correct answer is option C. That is conditional response. Your dog loves to go on walk around the neighborhood. You began an experiment by clapping your hand three times before getting the leash to walk your dog. Soon, every time you clap your hand, the dog comes running. This is an example of what concept. Options are A. Positive reinforcement B. Operant conditioning C. Negative reinforcement or it's the classical conditioning. So, it's an concept of positive reinforcement. If the dog is getting a reinforcement that he will be taken out for a walk. The third one, the stimulus that is paired with an unconditional stimulus and then association with it is called the options are A, unconditional stimulus, B, conditional stimulus, C, unconditional response or it's the conditional response. So the correct answer is conditional stimulus. In classical conditioning, the neutral stimulus can only be associated with the unconditional stimulus if options are the neutral stimulus prepare the organism for the other stimulus e the neutral stimulus is sufficiently intense c the other stimulus produces an intense response or hd the other stimulus is particularly noxious so the correct answer is option A means the nat neutral stimulus prepare the organism for other stimulus. The fifth one, when a dog has food placed in its mouth, the dog begins to salivate. The salivation behavior is called the A unconditional stimulus, B conditional stimulus, C unconditional response, or it's D conditional response. So, it's a option B. Classical conditioning is a learned paradigm from the behavioral point of view. Consider any stimulus capable of electing a natural response, whether this statement is true or false. So, it's a true statement.